Okay, so when it comes to one of the most fundamental baseline techniques for determining a lot of the psychological issues one's going to have, a lot of um, a lot of your baseline psychological ind indications or complexes or pathologies that one will have, those are going to well, you know, the whole chart's going to show all of that, but one really strong technique for seeing like a foundation of that is the placement of Rahu and Ketu and their nakshatra placements. Um, they can be in, they go through a nakshatra in about six months though. So this is actually like a long window um, of time for babies to be born, like a huge six month window where babies will have something, something in common, but then how they go about it will be changed based on their individual chart and like the sign and the house that it's in and the cusp that it's in and where the lord of that sign what it's doing and all those things so while this is a, a baseline thing you need to be it'll be very revealing to you this technique um at, along with that though you have to be very good at astrology and know a lot of techniques to really appropriate to, to get the full value out of this technique but with that being said, um, there, there, are, there are three types of types of uh, classifications of living beings that are uh, given in that the nakshatras have. And the nakshatras are the lunar zodiac. Um, there are 27 star groups that the moon goes through in a month. So this is not the same as the 12 sign zodiac. Okay, so now these nakshatras can be classified as being either datu, element, mineral nakshatra. Uh, datu means like mineral or constituent or uh, elemental attribute or just like um, like the base element of something. So it, oft it, re it relates to or it often implies stone or like mineral. Um, and these are three forms of consciousness to in Vedic culture. So stones and minerals are considered to have consciousness and awareness in Vedic philosophy, just not self-awareness, just not as much as other life forms. So nakshatras can be in that classification and then they can be in a mula one, which is a plant state. Um, and mula literally means root, you know, like we have mula nakshatra, which is the root nakshatra where the galactic center is, um, the root of, of all of this. And then there is the third nakshatra, datu mula jiva. Jiva means living being or animal. Um, so it implies like animal um, or just living being. So it could be a human too, but um, think animal for this sake. So K2, Rahu, all the planets, they can all be in, an, they're all going to be in a nakshatra and it's going to be in one of these classifications of Datu, Mula, or Jiva nakshatra. So I was actually initially really doubtful of this technique because well, just because, I don't know, I was doubtful of it and and I guess because it takes, it, it, you know, that, that takes six months to go through the Zodiac, that long section of uh, being in one, one, uh, one section like Jiva, you know, or Datu or Mula, it would take six months. So right now the, you know, K2, or sorry, I think I know Rahu is an Ashlesha, so that's a Jiva Nakshatra. So it'll be there for like six months. That's a long time. How can that be so Im impactful? Uh, for people because I like to look at things much more specific, you know, like someone born just a day before me is a totally different person. So how can a six month window like that um, say so much about a, a blanket effect on all these people? So it's, it, it does it about as good as it can do for six months worth of people, which is so many people. Um, so you still have to remember, you do have to use all the rest of the chart and read everything else combine it all, mix it, uh, this won't work every time. But with that being said, this works really, really well as a technique for seeing people's like baseline psychological issues that they need to work on and work out and overcome. 
and I know this because I tested this on 60 different charts of people, all people that I know personally, so not even as much clients or strangers, but people that I've personally been around and lived around them, lived with them, family members, close friends, uh, people like that, who I've tested this out on. I found it to work really well. So I'm going to share a few charts and kind of explain things. But first, I'm going to give a general uh, overview of what, what each placement will have to do with. So K2 being in a, K2 is our security paradigm, our comfort zone of what we feel we need to have to feel okay. Um, but we're supposed to be, uh, we're in this life, we're supposed to kind of be liberated from that. And even though that's what we really love the most, you could say, we need to work on the Rahu thing and develop that and balance that out balance out our karma by forcing ourselves to focus on the Rahu thing, which life ends up forcing us to do that usually one way or another. Um, and in so doing, we can then actually enjoy the K2 thing from a more healthy standpoint and then be liberated from our issue with that and then eventually be liberated overall, but that takes a long time. So, uh, Rahu is what we need to work towards. K2 is what we've already done. You, you probably already know that if you've studied some astrology. So K2 in a Datu, a mineral nakshatra. This type of person feels anxiety and depression more easily than the average person. Off, right off the bat. They feel isolated. They feel depressed. They feel anxious. They feel unsupported more easily than the average person. So if you line up 10 people in a room and you actually gave them everything, the person with the K2 Datu thing would feel like you gave them less. They would just feel less supported. It's profound, it's surprising, but it's true. It works really well in practice. These people feel they're missing something that if they just had that thing, they could bear all the pressure. What that thing is, you need to read the whole chart and it's it you know, more complicated. But that's a baseline theme of these people's lives. They feel a really strong need for a support structure of some kind. If it's in an air sign, it might be more like society, social, friends. Fire sign, it might be some other type of structure, though. So the rest of that kind of depends. Um, but they tend to rely on, they tend to rely on uh, support to a degree that is more than is healthy, we could say. What they need to do, though, is going to be indicated by Rahu, which can be in one of two other placements. It can never be in the same. So it can never be in Datu. It can either be in a Jiva or a plant one. What they need to focus on, will, Rahu will, will show that. But that's one theme of all those people. K2 in a Mula plant nakshatra, this is a theme of being too much like a plant in a past life and being too sensitive and plants you know as you're going down the road of life a plant the path is worn down there's no plants growing on it plants can't handle that they grow around it they grow to the light where it's shining over here they grow over here then once over there they grow over there um so they're very adaptable so these people kind of come from a place of having needed to be adapting always to new things all the time having to be like kind of adaptable that's just something that they had to do in past lives to be successful. So in this life, they feel like they need to do that more. And so in this life, they're kind of too sensitive and they feel like they need to, if only I had this, or it's this sort of sensitivity that just gets over, over, overly and excessive and it becomes like too much to where it just holds them back in life. They can kind of like drift back and forth without really like doing anything, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so they can have issues and they can even know how to fix them, but they still just don't fix them. And they can't because they can't like fix X because they need Y, you know what I mean? Or they can't, whatever it is. Um, a lot of people I know that are like the type of health food people who become so freakishly obsessed with their health and stuff that they're like so stringent that they don't eat anything, that everything is too bad for them. They can't ever make fine food, but they don't bother to, to put the time in to make good food and, and all that because they don't, well, because they're just used to being sensitive and adapting. They don't want to like put in all that work and effort. So they wither away almost sometimes like their health, they'll lose a lot of weight and they'll literally be withering away. 
um, sometimes. Or their love life might wither away because they're too sensitive and they don't just deal with the issues that the partner has because all partners will have issues. So they'll, they'll break up really easily and really quickly and they'll think they fell in love, but then they fell right back out of love and then they're on to the next thing. And they're, they don't have the, if the Rahu's in Datu, then that means they need to be tougher and hardier and just be more fixed, like a fixed sign and just hang in there and just, just tough it out. You know, there's a winter of everything, you know? Like there's a winter of every life, there's a winter of every relationship, there's winter time right now where I, I'm making this video. You just have to kind of hang in there. Um, if I decided to move to the tropics or it wasn't winter, just or move to Australia or something, then in a few months it would be winter again. I had to move back. You see, like there's never, there's no way to always avoid that. And so with K2 and Amula Nakshatra, one has to learn that and just kind of toughen up and not be so sensitive. Hmm. So their sens sensitivity limits them or their n inconsistency limits them and they need to be more consistent, more regular and less fluctuating all the time. K2 in a jiva, in an animal nakshatra, these people can be, uh, they don't seem to know how to act in ways other than animalistic primal ways and even those ways end up frustrating them so they can be kind of frustrated more easily um the animal nakshatra uh is about like submitting and dominating and you have to learn to do one or the other to step up if you really are the best in the situation the situation needs a leader to step up and be the leader and dominate and be the alpha or to step back and be you know, and receive and be passive and let the person who is the best leader lead. Um, that is sort of the K2 Jiva or Rahu. You know, that is just the Jiva issue. So people with K2 in the Jiva Nakshatra, when it comes to women, uh, they can be like uh, overly, the type of women that are just excessively flirtatious and sexual. And I guess in past lives, they needed to use that to get what they could get in life. Um, because sexuality is a very powerful thing. So they use that for it to get power. So in this life, with K2 there, it's saying, like, don't keep doing that. You know what I mean? So these women can be very, like, can, can kind of come off the wrong way with their sexuality sometimes or can come off overly flirtatious or overly sexual or be, like, I, I can think of one example who's just a really, really overly, very intelligent woman. But she, you would just never think that because her whole demeanor and the way that she acts and her whole attitude is just so excessively flirtatious and sexual. She always has a sexual aura, so no one ever really appreciates who she really is, which is actually much more intelligent um, and just more sophisticated than just that one level. With men, they can be like overly competitive, I notice a lot, but I actually don't have as many men with K2 Jiva in my database. And I think that that's interesting um, because it makes sense with my own chart um, and who I would attract and things like that. Um, but the men that I do have in my database with this, they can have weird issues with their aggression or with their like animalistic side or with their sexual side or their primal side. They can just have weird issues with that, like be like obsessed with eating meat and the primal feeling of eating meat. Um, or they can be obsessed with like just certain primal things like that or animalistic things because eating meat is like an, uh, something that humans don't actually need and we're frugivores. We're not telling you not to eat meat, do what you want to do. But um, the best diets, you know, people live the longest when they don't eat meat and our digestive system isn't designed to be frugivore or isn't designed to eat meat. It's a leftover evolutionary impression because as we've evolved, at least in Vedic philosophy, we've evolved through all these different life forms. And then we finally got to the human form, which has the highest like capacity for processing enlightenment and self-realization with our advanced brain, spinal cord and system and advanced nerve system and everything. Um, eating meat is a leftover residue of when we were animals and that was how we had to survive. So we will feel that we need meat more than um, average and you'll notice more and more refined people feel that need less. 
and so that's what's kind of neat is if you look back in history when being vegetarian wasn't really or like in even Europe where everyone ate meat and no one was vegetarian even people like da Vinci were a vegetarian you know like all the Renaissance men were vegetarian all the thinkers people who use their mind a lot are usually people who end up deciding that vegetarian is the best way to go um, like Tesla like just tons of people they end up kind of coming to that conclusion at some point in their life and that's why Another funny issue about that, and this video is not about that, is uh, like Leo, if you have a lot of Leo stuff, you can be really into eating meat because of that same connection to the primal energy of the lion and everything. But anyways, um, so that's K2 in its different places. Rahu in those same places, Rahu in a Datu nakshatra will be someone who really needs to develop the structure and the support of a mineral, being like a stone, being like a stone on the path that someone walks down and that stone just bears a pressure. There's no way it can be crushed, so it just handles it. So that's a strong Rahu Datu placement. People who have Rahu and Datu Nakshatra need to learn to do that. They need to be able to learn to just handle the pressure of life. They oftentimes need a healthy support structure for that or a healthy routine in life or some sort of structure routine, a meditation routine, or something like that that can help them um, to be more grounded. But these people will not wanna be like that. So the people in my database that have this are the least likely people, even if they're very spiritual, they don't have a regular meditation or they don't have a regular practice, they're just kind of all over the place. Um, the people I have in my database like that are spiritual, they're the ones who, who are like repulsed by the idea of discipline and their idea of spirituality is like no like everything is just going with the flow and just like feeling good and I'm okay you're okay everybody's okay and that's cool and all but spirituality is not really about just feeling okay it's about getting rid of getting over you know stopping the ending of the suffering it's about are you suffering can we help you stop suffering can you awaken can you awaken to the self beyond all of this suffering <laughs> Humans are suffering so much unnecessarily without spirituality. You know, that's what you see if you, if you can, I don't know, that's what I see in my life. So these types of people, they kind of need some sort of structure, support, or stone-like energy, ability to bear pressure. And you'll, you'll have to read the rest of the chart to understand why or how that goes in, how that plays out. Oh, and then also another way that that can play out is like those people need to become inwardly stronger too. So if it may not be external support, it may be inner support, but they need to become stronger, hardier, tougher people who can just toughen up and handle situations. Rahu and Mula, that's like you're going towards the plant stage. So they actually need to learn to be more sensitive and more adaptable and check in with their feelings and things like this. Um, they can be very insensitive to others. They can actually just plain be very insensitive to other people because they need to develop the sensitivity and they're not used to having it. They're not used to being successful by being sensitive. So it's a little bit different for them. So they have to work on that. And these people are actually oftentimes workaholics. The people in my database are all that have this are typically like workaholics. They don't know when to quit. You see, they don't know when to stop and shift and adapt and be like, oh, let's get some sunlight over here like a plant would. They just stay the course. Um, probably more so if they have it in a K2 and a Datu nakshatra. But yeah, these people need to kind of like take breaks, shift gears, or recognize the stages they are in. They'll just be working so hard at, and just be like, I need to be the, I need to be the best. I need to be like the, uh, say they um, got into doing astrology. They just like, within the first few months just think they need to be the best or something, you know what I mean? Or within a year, they're like uh, upset that they're not really, really amazing. It's like um, someone from a K2 dot two position should be like, yeah, that's a lifelong endeavor. So you should only be upset if it's your second lifetime of doing astrology and you're not successful or something like that. You know what I mean? So it just kind of depends on where people are coming from, you know? So these people kind of need to recognize the stages that they are at like a plant a plant is in the juvenile stage where it's growing then it grows into the um growth stage where it's uh growing out leaves that aren't just for getting energy 
and then it goes into the flowering reproductive stage. And then there's a bunch of stages within that stage. And then when the final stage, when the fruit is formed or the seed is formed, then it sheds out and then it goes into a whole other stage. And plants are always in just different cycles based on their environment and where they're at. So these people tend to not want that. They tend to not want to be where they're at in their stage and their growth at that time and in their environment. They're like, no, I want to be the best. I need to be here. I'm down here. I need to be there, wherever it is. I need to have a PhD if I only have a bachelor's or whatever it is. Um, depending on where their K2 is at, so they can be kind of interesting people based on that. And then also, um, because they don't have the sensitivity or the adaptability, um, they can actually be the ones that are most likely to get addicted to drugs or to have drug issues or addictions or things like that because drugs kind of help desensitize people. And so they can like that, even though that's not what they need. They need that. They need to get, I don't know how do I put it? Uh, they're the ones that need to do drugs the, le the least kind of or something because they need to develop sensitivity, but they uh, can be the types that can get addicted to drugs or be, or develop some sort of habit that desensitizes them because they're just not comfortable with that. Rahu and Jiva, um, last one. So those, those are basically, they're learning to be more animalistic. Maybe they came from a place where they were kind of more refined and you didn't behave that way. And in modern culture, where I'm at right now, it's kind of seen, um, or at least culturally, it's kind of seen as very ugly and, and, um, not good to either dominate a situation or to submit to it. Everyone's like expected to be in this weird neutral gray area right now. And that's kind of just cute to me. Cause like, how do you get anywhere with that? You need leaders and you need followers. It's just how life works. My teacher explained this really well. And he was like, you know, you have a wolf pack and in the wolf pack, the leader is the best wolf, but there will be another one that will challenge him sometimes. And that's good. And they might get in a fight. And then if the leader wins, then the other person who challenged him, that wolf can submit and know, okay, he is the best leader. He's the best fighter. We're all better as a group by having him lead. Or if he wins, then the whole group is happier too, because now we have, now we know who the best fighter is and it's this one and he's supposed to lead. Um, democracy kind of, it's kind of funny because like the modern de democracy, all these things are like modern social trends, they kind of have taken away this desire to just like acknowledge the best person at the thing and to let them just lead. You know, like that's what a king does, but um, you kind of got to wonder sometimes in this day and age, if you just had one better king, if you had one righteous king, he might be able to do so much more than a good leader who has to deal with a hundred other ignorant politicians and lawmakers and, you know, democracy, you have to please everyone. And so if most people are fools and idiots, then why should you have to please all those people? You know what I mean? And so it's kind of like, that's sort of one of the, that's sort of this idea is these people oftentimes, it depends on us to chart, but I find these are the types of people who, if you ever notice those people who are way better than everyone else at a thing, but don't think they are and somehow just are eclipsed or Rahu or blocked from that. They need to step up and realize how good they are and do the thing. And they're actually cheating themselves and, and you know, lying to themselves by not acknowledging it. You know, like someone like Bruce Lee, who was the best fighter ever, just should admit he is the best fighter. You know what I mean? He is the best. There's no one he could ever find that could beat him. So for him to not say that is lying. But it can feel weird to say that. You know what I mean? Or it can be weird to be the best at something like Bobby Fisher or something like that, you know? Um, so anyways, these people have to just learn to be more comfortable with dominating if that's their place or with submitting. That's the other end of it. When you're really just not good at something, just submit and listen to the other person and say, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. I'm going to listen to you. That never happens. You never see that in modern culture. So these are important, uh, important qualities to have. Um, that the Rahu Jiva person needs to develop. They have, it's kind of like uh, Pythagoras actually gave a really good allegory of that because Pythagoras was against, it was against democracy. And he said, if you're sailing a boat in the night and you get lost, 
who do you really think should should steer the boat? Should it be the captain who has a lifetime of experience in this matter? Or should you just ask the whole deck, like the hundred people on the boat, which way should we go? Should you just have them all take a vote when like children who know nothing about boats, uh, adults who know nothing about boats, you know what I mean, are going to vote and have their say? No, that actually muddies the strength of the boat. You see what I'm saying? When you could just have the best captain, the best leader rise to the occasion and lead you know, and lead you back to safety. That's your best bet. And that requires one person dominating and everyone else submitting. You see what I'm saying? So if that ever happens, hypothetically, that's a boat with people with a lot of these Jiva Nakshatra issues, <laughs> okay? Because they will have that opportunity to work that out. Um, the movie Batman The Dark Knight Rises has a really good example of that, um, if you guys are movie lovers, at the end of the movie with the boats and the two boats and things. Um, Okay, so one thing that I notice with the men that have this, because men are biologically kind of like set up to dominate, there'll be people that aren't comfortable with that. And that are men that are too weak or too docile or too, um, they can even appear kind of more androgynous, actually. Um, they need to assert themselves more. They need to step up and learn to learn to dominate and be like, this is what I want. I need you to move out and not make up an excuse. Like I, my girlfriend said she needed more space and we need you to move out or something like that. No, I need you to move out because that's just what's best for everyone. And a person with a healthy masculine energy can just say that. And it's not a confrontation. It's not, it doesn't offend everyone, but people with afflicted masculine planets get offended so easily or get worried or afraid as the moment a confrontation comes up. So these people might have that issue and they might need, so they'll, they're, they're, the God's life itself will force them into positions where they will have to submit or dominate over and over and over until they learn these lessons. So if you have this, just learn that lesson. You might need to just do these and, and apply this and then your life might get better. Um, And then, um, like women, on the other hand, might need to do the same thing, dominate in certain situations, and then submit in other situations. It just depends. And then remember, this is general, so it depends on the rest of the chart. Um, but then women can also, who have this placement, can be the types of women that um, don't, just don't understand the proper use of, like, domination, submission. So they can kind of have weird issues in sexuality, too, um, as well. So... But to really answer what they need to do, you need to kind of read the whole chart. So I'm not going to say anything else about that there. Okay, so I'm going to make a whole other video with examples. Um, but this is just one, one example uh, is Luther Burbank. <clears throat> Luther Burbank was a horticulturalist, one of the most famous horticulturalists ever or most popular, famous, well-known gardeners ever. And he hybridized a great deal of plants. And he was a really spiritual being, and Paramhansa Yogananda had a great friendship with him, and he writes about it in his book, Autobiography of a Yogi. And this guy was so cool. He actually hybridized, uh, like, the potato that I think McDonald's still uses as their French fried potato. It's the russet Burbank potato, and that's from him. So he hybridized a lot of the most successful plant varieties, all the most pest-resistant varieties, all these things, his coolest accomplishment, in my opinion, was breeding a cactus that had thorns and within a couple generations breeding one without thorns. And he did it by just laying there with the cactus and telling the cactus, I love you. You're safe. You don't have any need to have these thorns anymore. I'm going to keep you safe in his greenhouse. And like literally talking to it and developing this relationship of love. That's how he claims that he hybridized all his plants. So Yogananda got along with him great um, and taught him the Kriya Yoga techniques and all this awesome stuff. And they had a great relationship. He even dedicated his book to Luther Burbank. So this guy's chart, you know, we don't know much about him, but he had a, a profound love for plants, maybe an obsession even. And he got, uh, you know, he made his success of out of his, he made a success out of his life through plants and through studying plants and learning to be more plant-like. So I just thought it's really neat that um, he has his ruling plant, or yeah, he has his, uh, yeah, he has his moon in a 
plant nakshatra and his Rahu in a plant nakshatra. And Rahu is like the most important one you need to develop. So he needed to develop sensitivity and this plant-like quality. Um, Ketu in Purva that's a Datu one. So in that nakshatra, he, that showed that he had a, like a strong need for support and it's in a spiritual sign of Pisces and with the sun. So he was probably a very spiritual person and probably relied on that as like a support structure. But then he was moving into becoming more sensitive and more adaptable and learning to kind of, you know, follow where the light was going and be more sensitive to things. So working with plants is amazing uh, for doing that. And I highly recommend plant therapy for people who have Rahu or uh, a lot of planets in, in Mula Nakshatras. And for other reasons too. I'm, I'm just, I like growing things. I have a garden, I always have a garden. Um, plant therapy has been a good thing for me at least, I can say. My Makarika is in a Mula Nakshatra. Um, yeah, so he, uh, also it's in the 11th house, so he gained a great deal of hybridizing plants. And then, you know, we can read this further because the moon is delighted by Virgo, or delighted in Virgo, sign of using our intelligence to improve life. So he improved plants. Plants have a great deal to do with the moon. The moon grows plants with its cycle, with its lunar cycle. And the moon particularly deals with creeping plants, just so you know, like vines, things, and plants with milky sap. Uh, I can't think of anything off topic, off the top that he did with that. He probably did though. I just, I don't know his whole life. I've never read, read up on him a great deal. Um, but Rahu in a plant nakshatra with the moon in the 11th house of gains in the sign of solving and improving life, solving problems, Virgo, then having his Atmakarika ruling that planet, or sorry, that sign, his Atmakarika is Mercury, which also has to do with uh, healing and things like that. His ruling planet is Mars, which deals with working the earth and has to do with herbs and things too. So he's got some light placements there um, that would push him into a plant sort of situ a plant lifestyle. It being in the fourth house, you know, fourth house is the place beneath the earth that deals with environments, deals with land, deals with working with the land. Um, it's also noteworthy that he has a Venus Mahapurusha yoga, a great person yoga with Venus. And you would think that because Venus has a lot to do with plants as well and growing and uh, it's there in Taurus, sign of value, and earth sign. So we can see that pretty lightly that he would benefit from, or not lightly, pretty strongly that he would benefit from a, uh, from a life that works with plants. Okay, I'll give you guys some more personal examples, though, in the next video. Though. This video is already getting kind of long. All right, thanks, you guys.